Um, so we ended up having three groups total, um, two of the groups combined. Uh, so basically we have uh, until 4.30. At 4.30 we're going to let you uh, go downstairs to the second floor and socialize. So we have food and alcohol, and I think we have non-alcoholic stuff too. Um, <laughs> exactly. So um, all we want to do is hear the report. So, um, and also just let you know that we are going to compile all of this information, all of the notes, all of the audio recordings, and all of the uh, visual, the graphic facilitation. It may take us some time to get it all together, but if any of you want any of these pieces, this is for the community. So please don't hesitate to reach out to us. We're at the BU Arts Initiative. Um, you can email any of us there, and we're easy to find on the website. All right, so let's start with Alana's group. Is that all right? Sure. And again, if you do have, we're going to do this primarily as a reporting. If you have a burning, burning question, that's totally fine. But we're, we need to run to you with a mic. So please remember that, um, that uh, if you have a question, go ahead and make it known. But we're going to have to bring you a mic. Thanks, Ty. Um, hi, I'm Ilana. Uh, I am on faculty here at BU in the School of Theater. And I also am the director of new work at Company One Theater Company. Company One Theater Company. Um, so we had a small but very fertile conversation about um, artistic decision making and how performers with disabilities and companies who do not traditionally work with performers with disabilities can come together in uh, better collaboration. So uh, we did not have um, four uh, action items. <laughs> we had two really deep ones and an offshoot of one of the one, one of those two. So uh, one thing that came up is a desire for companies that have the willingness and interest in working with performers with disabilities to get into a resource sharing mode with other companies who are better at that. Um, one of the things that might mean is sharing captioning technologies or sharing uh, training modules. For example, um, working with uh, autism-friendly performances, there was an offer of a training module that Open Door Theater uses. So thinking about a way to set up a formalized platform um, or instead of duplicating work, utilizing pre-existing sharing platforms. There's a couple of Facebook groups that share uh, tech technology, theater tech. Um, so this is one way that we thought about doing that. Um, uh, importantly, that platform should have no promotion, not show promotion, but rather just about identifying resources and sharing them. Uh, the other thing we talked about was um, uh, specific to deaf actors. Uh, we were talking about how Deaf actors are only seen, if they're seen at all uh, in Boston theater, they're only seen for roles that are deaf. And we were talking about w why it is that theater companies um, have a, a sort of a stop or a, a perception um, against seeing deaf actors for hearing roles. And we talked about the funding challenges or the perceptions of obstacles that a company might encounter. And so one of the things that uh, came off of that was training, not just training for performers, but training for companies in terms of how to uh, work with performers with disabilities in general and in the, with the deaf community specifically. And we also talked about another action item that came out of that uh, very specifically, is to think about, is there space at the Stage Source Conference? Hi, Julie. Uh, is there space at the Stage Source Conference to talk about um, rethinking how train acting training works uh, for in the fringe community in Boston, um, like at the you know Company One's PDA uh, training classes or other training classes that happen for actors? Can they be more accessible, and what are the obstacles that keep us from doing that? Um, and then we also talked about, sorry, Chris, you're going to be another example. We talked about. Uh, for companies that wish to do more work in communities where they don't have much familiarity, um, just storming into those communities and declaring your willingness is not going to get you very far. So um, instead, finding and working with bridge builders who have cultural capital, who are also who position themselves as educators. So not asking people to teach you when that's not their job, um, but rather 
working with folks who identify as educators and who have the cultural capital c to connect you to the communities you're interested in. Um, uh, if you're a company that doesn't usually work with uh, performers with disabilities. So those were some action items we took away. Um, happy to answer questions or simply pass the mic to the next group. Hmm? I do want to hand it to Yoel. Thank you so much. So uh, I'm Corey. We were um, talking about uh, training, uh, which was a very wide-ranging discussion. Um, let's see, and it was hard to come to bring it down to just a couple of points. So, um, so some things we talked about were to offer training like today's symposium on a larger scale that brings together a larger community. Uh, because we have a lot of people in this room um, who are already the converted. I think there was a little mention of this earlier today, but how do we get people from other places in on this conversation and expand it and scale it up? Um, uh, another suggestion is to have more funding for staff and training in pedagogy in, in disability services. We were talking particularly about within BU, but I think this can kind of um, translate to other places as well to make sure that um, not just the staff of the disability services um, department, but also other members of the faculty and staff getting training about how to interact with people with disabilities. Um, and somebody mentioned something very similar to this. Um, I think Ilana said something similar to this about um, offering training for cultural institutions, possibly using online platforms or one uh, of one sort or another. And um, I have a feeling everybody's kind of has that going on in their mind somewhere. Uh, and then the last thing we had was a basic requirement that that it, cultural institutions. Um, we might want to figure out some kind of basic requirement on disability sensitivity for all employees, like is there some sort of certification program um, or project. That's such a teensy little piece of what we talked about, but there you go. As leaders and activists, we merged. <laughs> we did merge. Uh, we found the uh, slight curtain between the two of us was not really going to allow us to have separate conversations, so we thought that we would just become one conversation. Um, <clears throat> And neither Don or I kept notes, so thank you for our visual display. Uh, but we talked about leadership and activism. And uh, we do, I think we were able to merge so easily and quickly is that we believe that um, to be a leader in this current movement is activism. Uh, we did talk a little bit about how 20 years have seen some changes, but maybe this is the nexus or the tipping point that will really be able to be sustainable for uh, speeding up some of our, our ideas. Um, we also talked about training uh, and education, and what is crucially important is that it shouldn't be a one-off, is that it should continue. Um, the, the process is not done because you've taken a class. and requires refreshment, and there's new people who may uh, become a part of this movement, and there's a nimbleness that needs to really be a part of the training um, so that it really embraces all peoples who feel like they're on the margins and our ability to uh, work and embrace them. And <laughs> um, we talked a little bit through my perspective on the work, which, is, which was to um, be mindful of the fact that there are um, people with disabilities 
their disability is on the the cognitive and the developmental spectrum, and to be mindful that that is a, a population that is frequently forgotten about in the spectrum of disability. Um, but we talked, um, I want to highlight some of the ones that were really meaningful for me. We talked about and made connections between the leadership and the activism about the power of storytelling um, and also being resourceful. Um, those were those resonated for me, but the one that was really, really strong was being a deliberate messer-upper. <laughs> you know, deliberately um, challenging, challenging um, audience, challenging artists to um, sort of redefine and, and mess you up. It was well said when it said, I'm gonna mess you up on purpose in order to, um, to go forward, to have a place to go forward from, and to not be afraid to mess up and then acknowledge what was messy about it, how to, f how to clean it up, if to clean it up at all. <laughs> um, yeah, anything else? Oh, uh, and I think the mess up uh, tends to risk, where sometimes those of us in administration are adverse to risk. We're constantly aware of financial bottom line or not wanting to offend people, but I think mess up ties to risk. And the very nature of art, art making and being innovative means we need to take those risks. And as Keith was saying earlier in the day, it's not a miracle. We need to actually push ourselves for excellence and the discipline behind that. Funding, which we'll just hop right over. I just also, I mean, Charlie made a really good point, too, to not really um, beat ourselves up because 20 years ago, there are aspects of what's happening today and happening this week, and the people that are in this room 20 years ago might not have happened, so to not be so um, self-deprecating <laughs> is to say that we have not taken steps because we have taken steps. I wouldn't have been here 20 years ago, and it's not because I'm 29. No, I'm not 29. <laughs> Well, and I think that ties in nicely to this point, helping younger people find their voice. Um, <clears throat> 20 years ago, uh, as I said, things were different, but uh, the ADA has passed. The ADA uh, has passed long ago. Can we, with the young people who are becoming administrators, artists, uh, people involved in the support of the arts, uh, can we infiltrate all aspects of the program and think about access uh, and inclusion beyond just architectural regulations, but to really infiltrate everything. And then I think this is key, and this ties to something that I learned early on from Jody Steiner, um, with us, not for us. Seek out people with disabilities for input, your boards, your staff, um, <clears throat> actors, performers, crew people, um, again, audience, it really just is part of uh, developing a true sense of belonging. And I think that's what we got. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, just again, a quick thank you to our facilitators for each of the session. Um, We're so grateful for your time and to Halal and to HowlRound and uh, to the interpreters and to um, staff colleagues who went way above and beyond to make sure this stuff worked today. <laughs> so um, please, please, please uh, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Uh, like I said, we have this documentation. We will be um, figuring out ways to disseminate and put it up and spread it around. And uh, hopefully we can all keep continuing this conversation over drinks and snacks down on the second floor. <laughs> Um, so thank you again. Yes. Are we going to get documentation of those too? Because and a shout out to whoever did these. I love them. I love them. Yes. Yes. That's um, Carhartt Creative. You can find them on the web. 
Um, yes, we have, uh, we're getting uh, very solid, clear visuals. We, these will live with us, right? They live with us. Um, so yes, this will be available as well. Yeah. No, I just heard a rumor that perhaps tomorrow's um, panel will be online. Uh, so if, if, if that's possible for us to get on it. Yeah, so we have, um, so there were a few, uh, so the residency is happening this week. Um, there were a few things that were essentially labeled as class visits that were, weren't put out to the public, but this, now we are potentially figuring out that one of the panel discussions might be online. Um, we're still waiting for the official snow call. Um, it's gonna happen, uh, we all know that. Um, and so, yes. Um, bu.edu slash arts, A-R-T-S. Um, our main web page has an access right on the front. If you click that, we'll make sure Sarah or I will update with all the relevant information and any links you need. So bu.edu slash arts. Um, thank you. Enjoy the beverages.